So in front of me is the fifth iteration of the QK lineup, the QK100, and it's probably the workhorse for everyone. Getting some of the specs out of the way, I have the white with chroma mirror weight, which is absolutely stunning. And if it isn't your cup of tea, QK has a bunch of colors, weights, and even screen bezels for you to choose from. The kit started about $170, which is pretty sick. And my unit, if you wanted to spec it out, gets to about $245 before shipping and taxes. Timeline-wise, I believe the group buy starts sometime in like mid-June. I'll have to double check and probably put it up somewhere here, whatever YouTubers do. Uh, but other than that, I managed to play around with the board a little bit, jotted down some notes. So let's take a look. Aesthetically, the QK100 overall is super inoffensive and really clean. I love the implementation of the screen above the two navigation keys, the 2U0 on the numpad, and of course, this massive weight, which ties with the inner weight engraving for the juxtaposition of the great outdoors with sitting inside and typing on a keyboard. The side profile is also dynamic and not the simple square on wedge that we normally see. I will say, I'm not the biggest fan of this seam. It slightly tapers upward like the Zoom 65, where the 100 is technically a seamless keyboard, but I would have preferred to either just gotten rid of the transition or just fill it so it's not super noticeable. The only other gripe, which is super fucking OCD and really nitpicky, is just the visual balance when looking at the front of the keyboard. I understand why this exists from the limitations and trade-offs, and you probably don't give a shit, but specifically the 1.25 versus 1.5 mods in the bottom row, we've seen this on like in the Austin, but also this empty space between the arrow cluster. Especially with colored arrows, the board personally just looks a little bit too heavy on the left side. Build-wise, the board's very straightforward. There's a bunch of options to choose from. I went with the tri-mode non-flex-cut PCB, plate foam, palm plate, this really porous case foam, the included keycaps, and the new B-Sun Aenea switches. Do you have to make a quick note? The Aenea switches are pretty dank. The factory lubing is really nice, and if you want to check them out, I'll have them linked in the description. But bringing it back to the QK, you also have the option for either PCB mounting or plate top mounting. So in theory, you could plateless hot swap mount this keyboard. Might be a little sketch, but we'll check it out after we hear what the sport sounds like top mounted. So hot swap plateless, while viable in the alphas actually don't sound too bad, it's not recommended. And for some reason, the spacebar doesn't sound super great either. I'm going to chalk that up to user error and optimization, but I also would be a little careful since I found the PCB can bottom out on the ends too. So if you wanted to, you can hot swap plateless. It's not advisable, but the option is there. Other than that, feel-wise with the palm plate and all the foam, it's quite comfortable to type on. There's a decent amount of give with the gaskets on the 1.2 millimeter PCB. I don't notice any dead spots and it's just overall pleasant. Top mounted, obviously, it's a little stiffer, with the most notable difference being the spacebar sound. It's a lot more thunkier, if that's even how to describe it, but I'm going to stick with the gasket tabs personally with the long slits facing up. And that's pretty much all I can muster for today. I do have the flex cut PCB in the alu plate that I want to check out tomorrow, so I will see you then. So it's nearing the end of the second day with the QK100 and I managed to get a couple more builds in here. I did the Aenea switches on the flex cut PCB with the palm plate. It sounds exactly as you would imagine, kind of airy and flat. But this next build is the one that's probably going to stay in here for a while. It's the WS Blacks on the carbon fiber plate with the gasket tabs. This is probably the best I can get this board to sound in terms of acoustics and feel. It's not overly sharp or tinny, it's oddly quite clacky. So. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna head out to climb soon. So uh, I guess I'll check in with y'all in a couple days. See how it goes. All right, well, it's been a couple days since I last checked in with y'all and I've been using the QK as my daily workboard and as my hitbox in Street Fighter. And I have to say, it's been a nice experience. Especially for being the first QK board that I've ever owned, this is honestly a really strong offering. While the 1800 layout is something to be desired, and I can see why many people are choosing this as their workhorse setup, the QK100 in terms of being a quote-unquote premium budget board is scaringly accurate. From the design standpoint, finishing, machining, and a step forward in acoustics, it's all green flags for what's to come, and I am all about it. So if you're interested and you want to check this board out, you can check the link in the description. Other than that, that's all I got for you guys. Take care, and have a good one. Bye. Thank you.